Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the episode of NotAnalog.com. Today I'm looking at the Nokia E7. The E7 is quite different to all the other Nokias, such as the C7, because it has a horizontal slide-out keyboard. Uh, I've got the phone next to me here, let me just open it up. This is it right here, so you can see the slide-out keyboard which pops out there. It's really, really quite good for people who love to do a lot of typing. Um, this will probably be suited to people more of the business types who will punch out a lot of email and things like that. I can see this being beneficial to them. Let's turn this camera around and get you a bit of a better look at this device. Alright, so this is the Nokia E7. So I'll give you a bit of a tour of the device. Um, on this side, of course, is the uh, little micro USB charging port. Underneath this little flap is the uh, mini HDMI. Um, a little power button here and the 3.5mm headphone jack. On this side is the little volume. Instead of doing a volume rocker like most phones, it's sort of done a little bit of a push up, push down. Um, over here is the SIM card tray, and this is the little camera button for taking your photos. At the bottom, very, very plain and simple, just a little microphone hole. And on the other side is a little unlock switch. You will notice the ridge here, and this is because of the keyboard. Um, and also here is your little menu button. Uh, little camera proximity sensor. Uh, the camera is a four inch unit, uh, resolution of 360 by 640. Uh, the device weighs around 176 grams. Um, with that said, however, it does feel a little bit heavier than that. Um, it kind of feels a little bulky, and I, I don't know if it's just because it's quite a tough phone. Um, it just seems like it has that bit of extra weight. Uh, sliding the keyboard up, obviously you'll see this is quite a large keyboard. Uh, one of the things I don't like about this keyboard is that the buttons are a little too spaced apart. So if I'm typing between E and R, I actually have to move my finger. I can't really roll my finger across because the gap's too big. Uh, that's one of the other things. Otherwise, you've got every single button you can imagine. And obviously the alternate button to do you know numbers at the top, uh, you know different symbols as well. Uh, the at symbol has its own dedicated button which is so so handy for those who email a lot. Uh, going through the phone, it's typical Symbian. Uh, so you'll see I've added widgets you know, for mail, for exchange, my Gmail, my calendar, um, a little social fees and you can also add individual contacts. So say for example I ring a certain person a lot, you can put them on your home screen for quick dialing or quick SMSing which is quite cool. Sliding across I've got some other widgets. Really really simple stuff. I mean if, if you've used a Symbian before you realize how much you can actually customize your home screen and make it your own. Um, I seem to tend to customize the home screen to the point that I don't even use the main menu. Uh, you can put that much on there and that many applications. You can see here just one little widget box. I can actually add more here and more there as well. So really, really simple. I love my music widgets because I just get quick access to my music. I do a lot of that. So that's really, really important to me. And obviously, you know, using one widget doesn't mean that it takes you away from another. You can see the music is still playing. Um, and I can still do other things as well, so I think that's that's quite good. Let's pause that again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through the uh, the menu. So when I hit the menu button, um, you see one of the great things, which is different to even the newer versions of Android, is that it's always, if you want to play horizontal, it plays horizontal with you. Um, with Android, you can never get the main menu to do that, nor can you get the home screen to do the... Uh, the horizontal menu either. So that's something iPhones don't do it either. Uh, Blackberries do and obviously this Nokia does as well. Um, going through it, you know, really really typical Symbian. If you looked at my C7 review, you'd, you would see a lot of this already. Um, the calendar which syncs with my Gmail and my uh, Exchange account for work. Uh, contacts, very, very straightforward. Um, very straightforward stuff. Let's exit. Uh, the music section, quite good. Um, I showed you the music widget. Again, you know, it's what you'd be used to if you've used an iPhone or if you've used a, um, you know, an Android phone. It's really not that different. Um, I shouldn't have done that because now I'm playing a song. Stop. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, I'm just going to go back. There are some of the features on here where you hide them. If you notice this little green symbol here, it means that it's running. Um, so you'll notice if I go back, that application is running, there's something running in here as well, and it's my mail. Now what I like to do, and you almost need to do it a lot, is you press the options button, go to show open applications, and you, you will see them all here. Um, so it's another way of closing the uh, the apps. So I guess it does do multitasking, um, and you'll see I've closed absolutely everything. Uh, so it does do multitasking on that sense as well. 
So let's go back into the menu. Um, again, it's, it's quite simple. One thing I have to mention, and I, don't, I didn't mention it enough in the uh, C7 review, is the maps. The, the maps um, application on Nokia is, is, is superior. It is pretty much one of the best um, mapping devices which comes for free on the phone. It's so simple to use and it got me out of a real pickle just yesterday um, trying to get somewhere it was I was going way in the wrong direction and this this got me where I needed to get very easily and it does the uh, it actually speaks the directions as well all the navigation ones on Android phones and, and iPhones just tell you where you need to go and will point you in the right direction if you stare at the screen this actually does the uh, voice announcements as well which I appreciated um, going into the applications you'll see you know the video and TV for uh, watching video files. The screen is actually very good. Um, Simi doesn't seem to take enough of a benefit out of the screen because it's seeming a little bit ugly but um, you know I can show you some video footage here. It's really really crystal clear. This is uh, something in 720. So this is a 720p video and uh, it's, it's brilliant. Um, I, I love it. The, the screen on this is actually very good. It's an AMOLED screen. If, if you're into screen specifications so I'm going to go back, you'll see there's so many apps like YouTube and stuff like that. One thing, Android, uh, Symbian gets a lot of criticism. However, it has, it still has everything which you'd expect out of a smartphone. So a lot of the apps you can get on, um, on Android or iPhone is very much the same as what you can get on a, uh, on a Nokia device. It's really not out of place. You know, there's Angry Birds, you know, um, SMH has its own app and there is a lot there which still gets you by. I think the biggest letdown for this is just that it's looking a little bit old and frail. Um, the big screen app, I'm going to link up a, on the screen now so you can actually see how I use this app at home. It's to me the biggest selling point of a device with a HDMI uh, output. Uh, that to me is just fantastic. You know, putting a HDMI cable here and connecting it to your TV and actually being able to do every single thing on this phone is uh, is hugely important to me and I think that's extremely beneficial. Um, otherwise, I'm going to change it back here. I think that's been a bit of a tour um, and let's have some final thoughts. Okay, so you've had a look at the E7 and it's, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. I, I respect Nokia. I respect Nokia a lot for the features that they bring to phones and their ideas. I think that they've always had the best ideas and their build quality is phenomenal an 8 megapixel camera on the back is fantastic you know the HDMI out, I'm sure you're going to watch that video as well but the HDMI out is amazing um, you know everything on the outside is so good you know the, the, the maps which Nokia develops, fantastic the, the insides is great, the, the, the speed, the performance, it's, it's all good it's Symbian it's, it's Symbian that's that's the issue. It's it's the operating system that it runs on. I I can't use this phone forever. I um I trial these phones. I trial them for a few days, and uh, sometimes I don't like giving them back, and sometimes I'm I'm happy to give them back. This one I I'll, I'll live without. Um, I will live without this phone because it's just not built for me. Um, it will probably suit a lot of people. Um, the keyboard will attract a lot of people. The HDMI feature will attract a lot of people. Um, the high quality camera and obviously still getting the apps. Those real diehard Nokia fans will will respect this phone. I showed it to a few people and they really liked it. It's just not for everybody and it never will be. Um, Sim Symbian is what makes the Nokia biscuit taste bad. Um, and I cannot wait to see Windows Phone 7 running on this device. If this had Windows Phone 7, I might be yelling and screaming about how much I love this phone, but unfortunately I'm not now. However, let me know what you think of this device. I could be completely wrong and I could be the idiot here. Um, let's talk. Thank you for watching.